Hey, this is Phil from Scanner School. I am going to show you how to use Radio Reference Database version 2.0. I have a couple of tips and tricks for you, and I have a very special tip that is at the end of this video. So let's get going. Let me show you how to use the new Radio Reference Database version 2.0. Hey, I'm Phil from Scanner School. Let me show you how to use Radio Reference 2.0. Now, if you haven't used it before or you're new to it, look, here is a great tip right here. We have a tour guide built right in the Radio Reference. And if you lost your ability to find the tour guide, simply open up an incognito window or a private browser and it will pop back up. So what we do here is we click on Next and it tours us around, it shows us around the website. So again, we're gonna click on Browse and Browse will take us back to what we're used to seeing with Radio References Database. This is where we can see the country and drill down to states and counties. And again, if we click on Next, we can find out over here on the left-hand side, we can see the exact same thing. It's shortcuts on the left side. Near me is the ability to find frequencies that are close to you. You do need to have your browser's location settings enabled and turned on in order to use this feature. Submit data up here on the right hand side allows you to submit confirmed data to Radio Reference so that they can add that information into the database. And again, you can see on the left hand side, the same thing shows up there. Over here on the right, we have My Radio Reference. This is for premium subscribers and it allows us to see updates on trunk systems and counties that we are actively watching in the database. Many people seem to gravitate to this search window right here. I've, I've done a lot of tutoring sessions and I do some consulting and this is where people seem to jump right into. This is a great way to find things quickly, but again, I prefer using the browse feature up here on the corner. Now, again, we can also find some queries down here. We'll go into these in a little bit. We won't uh, spend time on them now. And even some reports. Again, we'll show you some reports in later in this video. Miscellaneous down here at the bottom, we have our glossary. We have our uh, link to our uh, database hand guide and also the API. Again, we'll look at that in a little bit. So now the tour is done. So what ends up happening is the first thing we want to do to go back to what we're used to using is click on the browse button. And again, we come back into the country view. Look at this. We have another tour guide up here in the right hand corner, which again means we are going to click on our country up here. Now, again, I'm in the United States. We're going to click on that. One of the things I want to show you right away, though, is this little hamburger menu up here in the right hand corner. And this is where a lot of other links and features are going to be tucked away. So don't forget to investigate this little uh, button up here, right? Right now, we can see this is just nationwide frequencies. And again, we can see down here at the bottom, this will also take us to our nationwide frequencies as well. So let's go back. Let's go back to our our uh, country view here. And what we can see underneath is we have the ability to search by city and location. We can quickly browse by state if we don't want to use the GUI up here. We can again browse by metro area. And of course, we can just browse by zip code. So let's drill down into a state. So when we click on our state here, I'm going to go to New York. And again, we can start to see a lot of the same familiarity that we're used to with the version one of the database. We have a map of our state. And as we hover over each county, we can see the county name. But what you'll notice is anything in green has been updated within the last 24 hours. Anything in yellow has been updated in the last seven days. Anything without a color in it has not been updated in the last week. Over here on the right, though, this is a very important menu. We're going to see this menu carry over as we start drilling down the state here. But we have a lot of our state frequencies located right in here. Again, the hamburger menu. We can see, again, our statewide frequencies. Uh, FCC license search, live audio, some downloads, a link to the forum, and also links to the wiki. Over here, we can quickly browse by uh, county. If we don't know the county on the map, we won't want to, you know, don't want to move around and look for it. We can navigate to it right from here. Uh, again, browse by region of metro area, and of course, we can do a query based on frequency. So again, if we wanted to, like, say, click on New York State Police here, it would take us right to a very familiar link that or very familiar layout that we are used to in the old uh, radio reference. So let's back up one and let's go into the county. Now, again, when we drop down to the county, we are greeted with another tour guide. Now, those tour guides can walk us through the county settings. So again, what we have different over here, again, we have our little hamburger menu. We also have this very important menu over here to the right-hand side, which we will look at in a couple minutes here in the video. 
over here again, we have our filter settings and we have another hamburger menu. So again, the left hand side is our map, but the right hand side, very important. This will shortcut us down to where some of the subcategories are. But one thing we had to do in the old version was scroll down to find all of our trunk systems. And as you can see, there's no trunk systems here. Where did they end up? Well, to make things easier, they are now located right here at the top of the entity list. Now, again, if we click on this, we can go right down to a dedicated page that just has our trunk systems. So let's go back to the conventional window here. Again, we can just use this to drop down to the separate sections of the conventional list. And again, if we look at the separate hamburgers here, we can now click on these and find out details about the subcategories. Now, again, this shows us a little window of basically the range of this category, which is good for when we do GPS scanning. But again, if we click on the license name, we can also see a map of the transmitter locations. This is not new to version two, but just how you find the information is a little bit different than what we are used to. Again, we have hamburger menus next to each one of these categories, and we can go through each one of these as well. Uh, another little tip is if you click on or highlight over hover over rather the header, you can see a bit of information about it. Well, let's go into our trunk system. So we're going to click on trunk systems here and we will click on the local county trunk system. Again, what do we expect? Another tour guide shows up here. Again, we roll through the tour guide and we, again, we've got a hamburger menu. We have a filter, right? We see a lot of common stuff here. Again, another hamburger menu for the sites area. We can filter our tour groups. Again, another hamburger menu and that is it. Well, what's in these hamburger menus? Let's take a look we can get a category report and we click on that and we can see basically all of the information about each one of these categories. We go click on County police. We can again see how the range is set up on this category and even the total groups that are associated with it. All right, stepping backwards here. What I like to highlight here is the fact that we can click on the name of a simulcast site, which now shows all of the FCC call signs. It shows the neighbors and it also shows the NAC and the RFSS. But what's also neat too is that it shows all the transmitter locations here and the range of this. And again, if we click on any one of these locations here, we can get a little bit of information about each one of these tower sites, which is again, very cool to see here on radio reference. Now, what else is neat is if we come up here again to the hamburger menu and we click on downloads, we can get the typical CSV download files for the sites and frequencies of all the talk groups, a PDF, and even a DSD formatted site uh, setup. Now, again, this does not always work when it comes to DMR setting, settings. Again, let's look at a DMR um, system here. Let's see, we got d -d 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 one voice network. Again, if we were to look at the downloads for here, we do not have the DSD files here. And that was never something that was available uh, on version one. So as you can see, a lot of the functionality of the radio reference database is already in version two. It's just where you find the data and how you get to it, just a little bit different. One thing I like to see is on the main database page is the fact that you can see the health of the database, like what's been going on here in the last 30 days, how many changes have been committed, uh, how many submissions, new submissions have been opened, how many have been worked, and how many submissions are currently pending in the database. What else is cool too here is we have statistics about how many frequencies are lo loaded in, how many talk groups, how many encrypted frequencies, how many encrypted talk groups, how many trunk sites, and how many trunk systems. So remember before when we went to the submit button over here, this takes us to a page where we can submit information to the rare reference database. We also have a guidelines page that help, actually helps us and walk us, walks us through the best kinds of information to submit. So that makes life easier for us dedicated admins. But what you can find here too, on the left-hand side, we have shortcut links to a lot of this stuff. So if we just come into the radio reference database, we have shortcuts to the My Radio Reference page. We have shortcuts to submitting data. And we also have shortcuts to My Submissions, which I'm not gonna click for now. Uh, we can also come in here and browse all data. Again, this browse all data, hey, doesn't that look just like this browse button up here? It is, it's exactly the same. And in fact, this nationwide button over here is the same as clicking down here. So we can see there's a lot of shortcuts that happen on this left-hand window here. Again, 
we have a little welcome window. But again, if we want to click on, say, common business frequencies, we can click on here. And again, a lot of this is very familiar to us from the old version of the database. It's just new ways of gravitating towards the same information. Something I want to point here, too, is the ability to search the database, which then just brings up a pop-up window, again, making it easier and faster to find the information that we are looking for. Now, this is information over, over here that's very interesting. So if we query the frequency data, we can actually quickly find, you know, frequencies that are defined by the entire database, by each state, or even we can filter out by tone. Now, we can also find by metro area as well. So if I want to just drop in, say, 483.123, and we can do a query, we can find anything that would happen to that frequency. Now, again, I forgot to put in a metro area. So let's go ahead and pick on New York City and see what comes up close. And again, there is nothing in the database that comes anywhere even close to that. So let's try this. Let's try 156.0, and we'll query that. And again, we have some fire ground channels and even some uh, sanitation departments in here as well. So again, I already knew this frequency existed in here, but it shows you how well that works. Again, we want to find this on a uh, entire database. We can look at querying the entire database, and we can also query just a particular state or even by a tone. Now, same holds true for a trunk system. If I know a trunk system's name, I can drop it in here. I can drop in a talk group, or I can drop in a hex code and query that and come right back to a look at this. There's two trunk systems running the same system ID. That's fairly interesting. But if you would want to use this to say maybe there was an opening and you're picking up a control channel that you haven't been able to monitor otherwise, and you see the hex code, you can now find out this is a new trunk system or something that is coming in over something like an opening. Now, you can also do an FCC search from the menu here on the left-hand side. And again, this is a nicer, cleaner way of querying data. Instead of going to the ULS section of the FCC website, you can put in your call sign, a licensee name, an FRN. We can find uh, a frequency by state. We can find by metro area, again, a proxy search. Again, this information has to be brought into FC, uh, into the radio reference database in order to be used, but it is very simple to find data from the FCC website in here. And of course, we can click on amateur radio. You can drop in a call sign and find information out as well. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and also like this video so that it keeps you motivated to make more videos. All right, reports is a cool thing to have down here too. It shows us basically how many frequencies are defined in a database, how many trunk systems and talk groups are in here. And of course, what I like about it too is we can actually find out how many different types of trunk systems with a particular flavor in here as well. If I want to find out any you know XPT systems for DMR, I can click on that and we can get a full list of systems that are defined here. And it's not limited to just the United States. It's globally. It's the entire database. Again, if I wanted to find out any Moto Turbo sites, I can click on that and find them all in here as well. So it's a rather fun and quick way of pulling information out of the database. And of course, update reports will basically tell us which counties have been recently updated, which agencies, and also which trunk systems. Now, down at the very bottom, this is the least common use shortcuts, I guess you could call it. And again, the glossary will take us to the area of the wiki where we can find commonly used scanner radio terms. And the database admin handbook is great because it gives us a little bit of an interesting behind the scenes look as to what to expect in the database admin handbook, helps us create a better submission to rare reference. And finally, an API, which is useful if you are going to add the rare reference database into your own personal website or into any other types of uh, applications that happen to be out there. So all in all, this is a very easy and uh, quick guide on how to use the brand new Radio Reference database. I want to thank the team at Radio Reference for bringing these enhancements to the database. And I want to leave you with one final tip and trick that you can use here because this is something that is mind blowing. So again, we're going to go to New York and we are going to click on the little hamburger menu and we are going to click on trunk systems. Down at the very bottom of the trunk system, we have deprecated systems. When I click on this, this shows all of the trunk systems that were in this state that are no longer in use. So if you want to look up some old information, that is how you do it. So again, if you like this video, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you check out our weekly podcast and also 
thank you to all my Patreon supporters because it's you that helps keep these videos coming. Thanks again and 73.